let's just start talking lacrosse. So in the press release, you're actually dubbed as one of the most prolific lacrosse players to ever touch the NLL. I mean, what kind of responsibility comes with that title when you go into this new assistant coaching position with the Nighthawks? Well, I think uh, the prolific part was when I was playing. I, I haven't quite received the prolific coaching compliment quite yet, but uh, I do have my fair share of, of coaching underneath the belt. And um, I think uh, my my lacrosse career will translate very well into my coaching career, playing versus coaching. And I'm uh, just as fiery as a, as a coach as I was as a player. I'm just as dedicated. Um, I'm just as as passionate about it. So. I think the guys in the dressing room will start seeing uh, my true personality come out throughout the year. Um, I like to keep things professional, of course, as it is. But uh, sometimes there's there's times that people need to be fired up and sometimes there's times that need to be calmed down. So you kind of have to find that happy medium on the bench, whereas usually as a player, you're always looking to be fired up. You really talk about being a player right there. I mean, how can your play as a player be translated to this new role? I mean, you talk about how you have a history of coaching, but it's a little different when you're going back to a league that is so important to your career. Sure. I mean, having the understanding of the league in the first place, I think, is paramount when it comes to preparation for your, your players, um, knowing what they're going through and, and where they're going to be. Uh, I think we gives you a little bit of an edge and an advantage when it comes to coaching. Um, there's a lot of coaches out there that maybe haven't had uh, the experience that I've had in the NLL. And I think that experience will translate quite well on the floor and off the floor. I was an offensive player on the floor. Uh, I plan on being the offensive coach for the Rochester Nighthawks. And I think, uh, you know, having some plays that have worked for me in the past, uh, some, some great coaches in the past have been mentors to me, uh, allowed me to kind of evolve my, my coaching style in my my coaching um, career for for an example now i don't want you to give up any secrets or anything but you really talk about being that offensive-minded player the offensive-minded coach i mean what is the number one thing that you're going to dive into with the offense going into the season well i i think um looking at last couple of years stats unfortunately for rochester they were last in the league in goals for um i think those numbers need to be increased uh, on average they were probably about eight or nine goals a game um, typically you, you want to create an atmosphere where on average you're scoring between 11 to 13 goals. It gives you a chance to win every single game. Um, you know, that's my side of the floor. And unfortunately, defensively, we weren't that much better. So, uh, at this point I'm coming into the season with an open mind. I like to see and evaluate players on my own. I don't like being told what the other coaches think of what those players are capable of. I'd like to see that on my own. And then I can find a role for them uh, within my offensive schemes and, and systems. So um, at this point in time, it's just kind of we, we walk in there, um, don't lose any creativity when it comes to plays and players. Uh, I do have principles that I like to follow. Uh, however, I don't I'm not necessarily an XO and guy where, where we kind of lose that creativity of the game of lacrosse. The beautiful portion of that game is, is being creative. And and that's what I like to thrive on as well. And then how do you fit in with head coach Mike Hazen in the crew? Where, where do you fit into there? Where's the person? Well, you know, Mike, Mike is, uh, he's, he's a little bit more um, calm, I think, on the bench. If you look at him, he's, he's composed. He's very calm. He's been there and done that. He's won at every single level he can possibly uh, win at as a coach. So I think his pedigree alone uh, presents respect and, and, and people see that. I'm a little bit more um, rah rah guy in your in your face kind of uh, you know you make a good play fantastic pat you on the back on the first guy to give you a huge high five and a hug um, and then on the other hand if there's something that needs to be fixed uh, throughout the game I'll be the first guy onto the on the bench where the guys will see coming off the floor and I'll kind of tweak and and allow them to to bring that into their game that particular um, at that particular moment in time. Now, we talked a little bit beforehand about the connection that you actually have with Nighthawks general manager, Dan Carey. You played with him in Colorado. What's kept you two in contact over the years? Obviously, the game of lacrosse, but how well do you really know each other? You know what? We know each other pretty well. Um, you know, I know his family. I've known Lisa for quite a few years now. Uh, when he was in Peterborough, we, we played against each other. We played with each other in Colorado, of course. We won a championship together. Those are the types of things that that you never forget um, and you relish in, in your, your memories and your memory bank out there. So 
Uh, Dan and I have been keeping in contact consistently when he was in Colorado uh, as, as the assistant GM there. When he moved to Rochester, I congratulated him again. And, and we, uh, we also talk lacrosse on a regular basis. Um, I'm always looking for players that, that aren't quite there at that level. I used to coach in the Arena Lacrosse League, which is kind of the feeder league to the NLL. And, um, you know, just getting that insight from those general managers, Dan being one of them on, on the players that I can help develop and produce to make them into that next level type of player. And, and that's where our, our relationship kind of continued and continued and, and vice versa. He's always asking me about players that, you know, may be able to get to that next level. Um, you know, the, the diamond in the rough, if you will. And, and uh, the communication has always been constant. So it, it is, it's a friendship that'll be everlasting uh, regardless. So you'll be pretty comfortable here in Rochester then. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. I play there a couple of years and uh, with the Rattlers uh, in their yeah. field cross program. So I'm, I'm aware and, and, and familiar with the, the area and, and the fans and, and I'm looking forward to getting right back at it. No, you just brought me right into my next question. I was going to ask go. how familiar are you with Rochester? I mean, since you were here a couple of years, what's your favorite part or what are you excited to get back to in the flower city? Well, I didn't know it was called the flower city. That's for sure. Um, yeah. I, that okay. the, uh, the river itself turns green in St. Patty's Day. I'm not sure if that's a regular color or not, but uh, joking aside, there, I still have a lot of friends and family in that, uh, mostly friends and a little bit of family in that area uh, of upstate New York. And, and I'm looking really forward to getting back and, and really, you know, settling in in a position that I'm, I'm familiar with as an offensive coach and, and hopefully back and meeting new friends as well and as the fans again and the fans have always seemed to be passionate uh when i go to the blue cross arena there and and hopefully they're just as passionate uh, uh for all the cheering for me versus booing for me this time i will say the fans will want to know this have you had a garbage plate and if you have what are the thoughts on it well i i remember next uh discussing a garbage plate back in the day it was after one of our Post game um, get togethers, if you will. Uh, John Grant Jr. took me to a, a lovely place, and, and there was uh, there was a lot of things on that plate that I can't even distinguish what was actually on it. So I think I dove right into it. I know there's fries, and there was I think at one point there was an egg in there. Um, there was all sorts of different ingredients that I don't think I've ever put together, but it was it seemed to be working for itself at the time. All right, yeah, I'm I've only had a couple, so I'm not exactly sure what all is really supposed to go into it. And the Rochester fans are probably going to hate me after hearing that, but um, yeah. I will say I've never had an egg in any of the ones that I have tried. Oh, so maybe that was one of the, I maybe don't they, were, they were hazing me at that point. I have no idea. Yeah, maybe, but Hey, if it worked and you thought it was good, then yeah. you're going to be on good terms with the Rochester fans. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Anytime.